Welcome to the Studio Talk podcast. I'm Xiomara Sosa, your co-host. Every week, we speak to our community members to teach them about mental health through education and awareness, and our hope is to inspire them through social change advocacy. We also interview community members and other mental health professionals, clinicians, healers, students, and wellness professionals. Our style is storytelling. Everyone has a mental health story to tell. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional and is not a substitute for psychological diagnosis or treatment. It's purely educational and purely social change advocacy. If you find yourself in any sort of mental health emergency or distress, please dial 911 or go to your nearest emergency room. Hello everyone, welcome to Studio Talk Podcast, Real Conversations About Mental Health. We're a weekly podcast about all things mental health. I'm Xiomara Sosa, your host for today, and I'm here with my co-host, Lisa Early. Hello. (laughs) And we're both licensed um, therapists here in the state of South Carolina. You can get all of our podcast information on our podcast website, including subscription information, at studiotalkpodcast.net. You can contact us via email at studiotalkmentalhealth at gmail.com or phone or text us at 843-695-9974. And, um, okay, so let's see. Again, subscription information is at studiotalkpodcast.net. So we are going to now... Move on to our topic. I don't even remember what episode and what... I know we're season two. I don't remember what episode numbers, which I'm thinking about changing the season format anyway to just episode numbers yeah. and not do season one, season whatever, because nah. So at some point you'll have season... I mean, episode 358,000 <laughs> or something. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm just thinking that I'm going to change it probably next next time around. Anyway, so today our topic is burnout. Burnout and mental health, but burnout. Um, And it's it's a very interesting topic because there's so much denial around burnout and what burnout is. Because why? Because in our society, if you're not burning yourself out, you're not being... You're not being productive. You're not being productive. You're not being a good citizen. You're You're not being... You're lazy. (laughs) You're anything and everything that you end up in our offices for (laughs) talking about. So um, burnout is a real, actual, a very serious, it's not a medical or a mental health condition per se, but it is a very, very serious condition. And for some people, it takes years to get over. I I know, like, I think I've had like three clients who it, it took like even before they started going to counseling and they were trying to repair from it it took like a whole year before they can even get themselves to therapy that's how burned out they were and i've experienced mine sure you've experienced so have i (laughs) you are um so let's talk about what um the definition of burnout is the official you want okay i will read it burnout is a state of emotional physical and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress right Um, people tend to conflate those two terms, stress, burnout, stress, depression, burnout, depression, yeah. like all that. And it's, they're not, they're all excessive and prolonged stress. When you look into what that is, which we're not going to do, cause that's a whole episode within itself is it's an incredible phenomenon in, in the United States in particular. It really is. It's like, I don't know what we're thinking <laughs> like half the time on how we promote that kind of life. But burnout is it. It, it's it's caused by that kind of excessive and prolonged stress. It's not necessarily something that it doesn't come from your character. It doesn't come from your right. energy. It doesn't come from your life. You know, like there are so many things that it comes from, and that's what we're going to get into. Okay, um, it can be pretty difficult to to describe. And as I was um, explaining to Lisa, it's not we you know it's not a medical condition per se. But I'm going to read um, the APA, the American Psychological Association, um, definition of what burnout is. And it's defined by them as a physical, emotional, and mental exhaustion, accompanied by decreased motivation, lowered performance, and negative attitude towards oneself and others. We've all been there. Yes. And, And not everybody experiences burnout the same way, but at the end of the day... 
it is burnout. Right. And it doesn't have to be in the same situation. It doesn't have necessarily have to be yeah. from work. Mm-hmm. It can be from home. It's, it occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to meet the constant demands. And those demands can be from a spouse, from children, from family, from yeah. coworkers, from supervisors. And even illness. Like, think even about illness. that. It's dealing with um, a chronic health condition, dealing with being the caregiver to someone who has chronic a chronic health condition, dealing with someone who is aging and going through the process of dying and then trying to live your, trying to do your day-to-day life, trying to do all of your responsibilities from work and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't mean that you can't keep up. It doesn't mean that you're not good enough. It doesn't mean anything like that. It just means that the human body was never made to be in that sort of ongoing chronic situation forever and ever and ever. And at some point, your, your, your mind and your body starts to break down over it and tell you that it needs to stop. Right. So, yeah. So it's a very interesting um, thing to talk about because people toss that word around a lot. You know, when they're feeling tired, they had a really, I don't know, crazy week at work or something like that, so they want to sleep in all weekend and then decide that they're burnt out. That's not it. No, that's no. just, yeah, need a little break. <laughs> what burnout does is it stops you from everything. It doesn't matter how much sleep you get for how long. You will not be able to recover from it, from taking a tiny vacation on the weekend and going away and visiting your favorite family right. member by the lake or something like that. Like, it, it's going to require, that's a great first step, you know, and it's a great thing to do. We should be doing that anyway to avoid burnout. But when you get to burnout, it's such a serious, serious depletion of, of, of even anything, the, the ability to even take care of yourself. And it's serious because it's not something that you can recover from right away. Right. And it affects you. It affects your job. It affects the people around you. It, it's serious, you know? And it's also painful. It's some of the, the information that I've read about this is the feeling like you increasingly feel helpless hopeless mm-hmm. um you just have zero energy now that can mimic depression yeah but there are some key differences between yeah the two. yeah and we're going to get into that because yeah. i think a lot of people think that that's what they have when it's really burnout mm-hmm. or you know vice versa but there's some key because the thing is that depression is not necessarily always caused by a particular trigger that's not depression can just happen because it happens. Because it happens. I mean, clinical depression, not not normal situational depression, and you you have to go through the treatment. You have to go through the process of that. Burnout does not work that way. Right. You don't just wake up one day and feel burnt out. And, right. Burnt out is specifically caused f- by specific mm-hmm. reasons, and it is preventable and avoidable. Mm. The problem is that the recovery from it is what takes. And if you're not careful, and you think oh, I've done enough, and you go back right back to where you were when you got burnt out, you're going to end up right back at ground zero again. So, you know, it's tricky. So anyway, let's read some of, let's see if I can um, find that list. Okay, you were talking about um, feeling overwhelmed, emotionally drained, unable to meet constant demands. Um, And then as the stress continues, you begin to lose interest and motivation that led you to take on specific roles in the first place and i've seen that happen i've actually seen that happen a lot with people who take on more than you know and i've been accused of that with my caregiving with my parents and all that Mm -hmm. and and i say no to that because i did everything within my power to take care of myself in that situation what burnt me out was eventually not having the support system that i went into it expecting to have and thinking to have Mm. so that when things got real serious um the burnout creeped up on me because i wasn't prepared for that part that's the part that was a big emotional burnout then big emotional burnout you're expecting people to show up yeah very specific people and and some did some didn't and you know it, it was just very you know and this happens it's not to blame them not to blame everybody responds to these things differently so i'm not blaming anybody i'm just saying that that was that was my um, sort of trigger into when my burnout started, and then what I did to kind of like get out of it. Yeah. But it wasn't from initially lack of doing the things that I needed to do to take care of myself. Um, so we'll talk about that. But anyway, okay, moving on. So the negative effects, you know, of burnout start to spill out into all areas of life, right? Home life, work, social life. 
Um, it causes some serious long-term changes in your body. This is a big one. This yeah. is a really big one. Um, you know, it makes you really vulnerable to illnesses, like we were talking about earlier, yeah. like the flu, <laughs> you know, colds, fevers, feeling drained, mm-hmm. every little cold, every little thing. Headaches. Headaches. That was my big one. It was yeah. headaches. headaches. I, I always had like a tension headache. I think that was always what... That was my kind of sign, like, okay, mm-hmm. this is really... It's time. <laughs> emotionally, mentally, I'm just, I'm you're, burnt out. You're there, <laughs> burnt out. Yeah, there are jobs that can do that. Yeah. And that's where this, we as... And people. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> people in those jobs. Yeah, people in those jobs. <laughs> really, because we can't really blame the job necessarily. Yeah. There's the institutions. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like... Um, Almost like we live in a society that glorifies people burning themselves out. We do. We do live in that kind of society yeah. where you have to be going 100 miles a minute or you're yeah. just not productive. You're yeah. not doing all that you can. Yeah. And you're just not cut out for this kind of work right. if you're not doing A, B, C, and D and missing all this sleep and all that. I get that there are some jobs because I've done those kind of jobs. I've seen those kind of, I get that in an emergency room yeah. and you're an emergency doctor. I get that you're a police officer. I get that you're like, the, there are certain things that require you to sort of, but then the, the rest and taking care of yourself part is what they should also include in that. That's, that's true. And you know, and there's so many examples of that where people think that you have to do so much more than what's required yeah. Uh, an well, example would sometimes- be like, think of like if you have a nine to five and it's five o'clock, you know, you wrap up for the day and you've got a couple of people that it's six, six thirty, seven o'clock and they're still at work sending emails because to them, they're showing that they're really committed and they're super productive and mm-hmm. but they're burning the candle. At they're going to burn out. <laughs> It'll show up. You know, what's a great example of, of how burnout shows up. And this is an extreme example. Okay. And this is not a political comment. So do not come at me with political <laughs> garbage because I will shut it down. But it just so happens to be someone who was a politician. That was Bill Clinton, right? So he went in and he went in like this young, vibrant guy, right? Who did whatever, you know, got himself in trouble, did this, mm-hmm. did that, did whatever the hell, you know. Um, and then like when he was done serving and went off to become regular Joe Schmo civilian guy, he had, he ended up in the hospital in what was it, like a quadruple bypass mm-hmm. heart surgery thing, right? Now he goes... Throughout the country, giving speeches, talking about how absolutely, in, in his opinion, absolutely anybody and everybody who's involved in, in politics, they're sick. They're unwell in that way. Mm-hmm. They put, they, they get, they push, they do like these, these ridiculous kinds of lifestyles in those positions. And because they're doing it and they're able to do it, there's like that, that competition or that if you're not doing it, I'm yeah. you know that. But it ends up showing up in the end and it ends up with having to have a quadruple (laughs) bypass it ends up with anxiety and what about margaret thatcher who ended up with serious brain health issues and all stuff which they contribute to that like anyone who's really been had that sort of position in a job which which you know anyone who works at and contributes so much to society deserves their kudos deserves their all of that but we can't deny the fact that it takes a toll on the human body. It takes a toll. It, at some point, those people go down. Yeah. And when they go down, they go down hard because of all the years, all the hours, all the time that they spent burning themselves out with these like random Band-Aid solutions along the way just yeah. to get them through, get them through, get them through, get them through. Right. Um, there comes and, a point where you have nothing left to give. You have nothing left and to give. And your body's going to take that break when it needs it. It's going to shut it down for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, mine did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's 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 scary, and this doesn't have to be like the Bill Clinton kind of burnout. That's yeah. you don't have to have that kind of burnout where your heart says, "I'm going goodbye." You know, yeah. like we don't have to do that. But we're still talking about your inability to even have conversations with people without becoming irritated. Your consistent need to be sleeping to not function in the normal world that you normally function in, to not have a, a relationship, you know, that's function. So not, like all of these things start to add up to be feeling sick all the time, mm-hmm. to be too tired to do anything all of the time. You can't get through a paragraph when you're trying to read something and you can't get through that paragraph. Your appetite is gone. All of these things that are avoidable are signs for different people, but there are signs. 
of burnout. You, like, like we said before, you're overwhelmed, emotionally drained, unable to meet any of the constant demands on your, on your body. It reduces, you know, your, your productivity. It, it saps your energy. So if you don't have energy and then you're trying to pretend you have energy at this job that won't ever let you go home and get energy, at some yeah. point, man, you know what I'm saying? At some point, people they just lose it. And you become cynical. You become resentful. I've seen people come in through my office talking about wanting to quit what they were doing, yeah. even though it was the dream job that they thought yeah. it was going to be. And they were just so burnt out with the way that they were being. And I've seen that even in mm-hmm. our field. You know, I've seen that. Absolutely. So, you know, there's some personalities where, you know, they enjoy going 100 miles a minute all the time or they, they have to stay super busy. It just makes them feel better about what they're doing. And those people tend to miss the signs of when they're they burning do. themselves out. I happen to, to know someone that, you know, is close to, you know, in our family and all the signs, all the signs are there. And, and unfortunately, you know, like I said, a lot of people get into denial about it. They don't really see that that's what it is. But meanwhile, yeah. their relationships are gone. You know, their home life is just not what it was. Yeah. Just, their work life is destroyed. They're, it's just such a trail of destruction, you know, to physically. And, and y- your entire life is affected by it. So it, it's serious. Then the fact that it just requires so much to, to just recover from. And we'll talk about that, too. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so we've crossed the line. <laughs> we've crossed the line between really tired and too exhausted to function, okay? Yeah. That's kind of what we're having. And a lot of this is because, you know, your work-life balance, your work-life balance gets out of sync. There are arguments out there that said that there's no such thing as work-life balance. You know, what, what, what is that? Yeah. I don't know. What is it? To some people, is I think it's different. I think it changes. I think it changes. I said, just tell me more about it. It changes because there are some days where I need a little I need to put a little bit more focus at home than I do need to, you know, with work. Yeah. And then I will adjust accordingly, but there are some days where I feel like I'm neglecting certain things at home. Yeah. Because work is so demanding that particular day or yeah. that week or yeah. that month, you know. Yeah. I, I think the thing to remember is that when we're talking about burnout, we're talking about long, a prolonged, excessive amount of stress. Right. Not a stressful week, a stressful month, a stressful day, three stressful days, and then I feel like I, you know, I've accomplished something and now I have to, like, right. that's the ebb and flow of thing. I don't know that there's a perfect life-work balance at all. I think that sometimes that might be a little bit of a myth that then becomes the next thing that people right. try to chase, you know, but... Yeah. I think it's different for different people, for different personalities, mm-hmm. for different ways that we self-soothe, whether it's functional or dysfunctional. I mean, I think it all depends. But I think that the signs of burnout are the same, regardless. Yeah. And that once you start experiencing that, then that's when you need to kind of ch- start making the changes that you need to make. Right. And for some people, it might not be working 40 hours a week going back to working 40 hours a week and maybe getting some help at home with whatever. For some people, it might be only 10 hours might make that difference, you know? Yeah, and so I think the, the, the answer to, the, maybe the answer to that of the work like work and life balance getting out of sync is, is it impacting your life? Yeah. Well, how is it impacting your life for this prolonged period of time? Is your home life really out of balance, not just for a week or a month, like the mm-hmm. example that I gave, prolonged yeah. periods of, Home life really just being upside down. Work life, both, mm-hmm. just yeah. all over the place. It has yeah. to be a prolonged period of time. Yeah, that would be out of sync. Yeah, that would be out of sync. I, I, I think work life balance. There's like a definition out there that is the ideal, but I think for everyday people who might not be, I know I have made a very, very conscious effort, especially while my mom and my dad we're going through their, their illnesses and all that kind of stuff. I like, I will not work more than part-time. That is my way of avoiding um, burnout. And even though in our field, 16 clients, which is my, that's my max that Mm -hmm. I do, you know, those are the hours that max that I do. Like that's when I consider 14 to 16. Some people is 30, some people it's less on work. But for me, I consider that part-time because of the hours that I actually have to leave my house to go to my office to do my job with those clients. Mm -hmm. So I consider it part-time because when and if I ever try to do full-time, 
and still take care of my dad and still my dad now, but used to be my mom and dad and still try to have a personal life and still run my own business and still run my own house, like all that, then it would be me contributing to my burnout. Right. So my trying to have life balance was I can't ever be more than what's considered part time which is a joke because when you think about what you do outside of the hours that you meet with yeah. with your clients, but at least I can do it at home while I'm sort of like dealing with some other things that I need to deal with too. I can do my notes at home. Well, I you've been do. specific with your work-life balance. Yeah. You've been very mindful with it. Mm-hmm. You've just coordinated it to fit yeah. so that it soothes you and provides you with what you need. So yeah. you sound like you've got the, yeah, no, I learned, got a really good work-life balance. I've learned that the hard way. And I also learned from watching some people around me, be so excessive in the amount of what they think they should be doing with work and the toll it has taken. And they're still not even like recognizing it or much less recover from it. But you can see the signs. You can see the dissociation that takes place when they're around. You can see it in their face. You can see it in, in their attitude. You can see it in how they're so quick to, yeah. to, they just lose it so quick. The anger's like, it's just so many things. Plus they're sick and they're ill and they're there. So, the relationships. So I've seen it in that way too. And then you also see it in your clients. So you learn, you know, you learn through that. Um, but so for me, that's what work life balance is. Um, it, and it's different for everyone else. You know, for some people it might be, I ain't working. I'm just not going <laughs> to freaking work, man, while I do this over here because, and that's cool too. You know that? Yeah. Cause when I have to shut down, I shut down, when I have to shut down my office, like when my mom went into hospice, I shut down my office. Like yeah. I just shut down my, I had to, and I did that and I worried and I wondered. And then I was like, no, what, what the hell am I going to be bringing to my clients right now? Right. You know, like a raggedy. And then you're just going to add stress <laughs> to yourself. Stress. Because, because uh, then you're not going to be doing your job to the yeah. best of, that you and know I, you can. And I was <laughs> being unethical for a moment because I kept not showing up, you know, like in a few times in a row. And finally I was like, oh, no, this is not good. So yeah. anyway, okay, so let's let's just kind of like wrap wrap up the whole are you on the road to burnout conversation, right? So here's just some general things to look out for for that. It's like, you're feeling like every day is a bad day. You're caring about your work or home. Caring about your work or home life seems like a total waste of energy. You're exhausted all of the time. The majority of your day is spent on tasks you find either mind-numbing, mind-numbingly dull or overwhelming. That was it for me. That, that was right it. There. And that's a lot of social yeah. workers that I know yeah. and a lot of nurses that are clients. That's why they come mm-hmm. in. Because they just cannot find I'm like, this, the purpose this in their sucks. Yeah, Everything about this sucks. And I just can't find the meaning in any of this. Yeah. 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 Just like that a rat race. That was yeah. it for you? Mm. And I think the big one is when you're feeling like nothing that you're doing makes a difference mm. or is appreciated. Yeah. And these are all work-related burnout because yeah. there's a burnout that happens at home and, you know, in your life when you're not working and people go through. Moms go through a lot. Oh, that, you, that, the last moms. one there could be home too. You feel like nothing you do makes a yeah. difference or is appreciated. Yeah. That Especially I, if you've got kids. <laughs> exactly. And I see that with a lot of new moms that are clients yeah. of mine and they're new moms and they really, really feel that way. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't know if it's actually true or not happening or not but their burnout is making them Mm -hmm. that's their experience you know so um very interesting you asked the question earlier if burnout is the same as depression yeah it can can definitely be construed as that Mm, yeah okay there's a baseball team practicing baseball downstairs (laughs) so if you hear that 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 sudden like i don't know what like it's not us it's not us we're not playing baseball (laughs) and talking to you about burnout (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's what that is okay So some of the symptoms of burnout often resemble the symptoms, you know, of the more serious medical conditions like you were talking about before. Mm -hmm. Um, These can include medical health, um, mood disorders like depression, you know, because it kind of mirrors it. Yeah. But like I was telling you before, depression is a diagnosable mental health condition, whereas burnout is not. And that to me is like the big deal. And diagnosable means that there's specific criteria Mm -hmm that is required in order for us as mental health clinicians to give you a clinical diagnosis diagnosis of um, clinical depression. Whereas with burnout, we don't need to do that to to kind of decide that you have burnout. It's not something we're going to diagnose you with, right. but we're definitely going to name it, you know, and address it and help you figure out what to do about it. The other thing is that burnout tends to be a response to a specific environment 
or situation as opposed to mm-hmm. depression not really it something can trigger it anything can trigger it there can be absolutely zero trigger right. to it's it really broad yeah right. so there's no if it's i think a great example is oh my god i think i'm feeling depressed instead of you know burnt out so i think i'm gonna go take a trip to italy now and um <laughs> I'll feel better when I come back. Guess what happens? You take your trip to Italy and you still feel depressed. You still feel depressed. With burnout, it actually does help you. Yeah. <laughs> like to take the trip to Italy yeah. for three weeks and kind of like decompress and let your body start to heal. Let yeah. your mind start to heal. And that actually does help in the beginning stages of trying to recover and heal from burnout. That doesn't really do a whole lot for you if you have clinical depression. It's not bad either. Yeah. I'm not saying don't do it. <laughs> you know, but... But that's it, depression goes with you wherever you go until you go through the process of healing and treatment. And correct me if I'm wrong; they do not prescribe medication for no, burnout. There's no medication <laughs> I didn't think so. because it's not clinical. It's not. Clinical. It's not clinical. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so okay. So then, moving on down. All right. So then, let's talk a little bit about what to do about it. Where are our little notes for that? Oh, wait, let's talk about like some, some other symptoms. Like I like the one we were talking about before, the headaches. Yeah. Because sometimes we think that this is just normal part of life, right? Like these different symptoms we're going to talk about now. The first one is fatigue. How many people in America, because <laughs> we're going to talk about America, in America boast and really... I don't know. Like their ego is so stroked by. Yeah, I've had two hours of sleep and yeah. I'm running out. Like, and this really? is, and those, I'm so fatigued. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm sleeping all the time. I can't even brush my teeth because I'm so tired. And their fatigue is literally coming from their burnout as opposed to like depression or a medical condition. Yeah. And they're bragging about this. Yeah. And they're still, and I'm still going to get up tomorrow at four o'clock in the morning and go to the office. And Again, you know. those are the people that, you know, you should have been home three hours ago, but you're sending emails because yeah. you want everybody to see that you're still working. Yeah, yeah we, we know what you're doing. Yeah, And then there are also <laughs> some people who don't have a choice because there's the system. Yes. The, the yes. system that requires that of them. The system will, they're afraid they're going to lose their jobs over it. They're Absolutely. afraid they're going to lose their promotions over it, which is very real. Yeah. Or um, they're going to be treated differently. They're going to be passed over. To, or they don't get paid unless they're working like that. Or, you know, it's just a million different reasons why. But if you have the choice not to, and it's yeah. simply to look and look a certain way and gain certain favors and all that kind of stuff, you're not doing yourself any favors. It just that imme- makes me immediately think of, so what do those people do about burnout if yeah. they have no other option? And some people have no options. Like, I can't imagine, I know nurses who can't, doctors even, who can't do that. Like, they literally have to go through all of that and still be that. And then that's why we have such high suicidal yeah. ideation with them and such... Burnout with them, so that's a whole nother. I, heard, yeah, I listened a to whole a whole nother. <laughs> I listened to a podcast with a doctor who was like explaining all of this from their whole residency and their everything from school to when they first start working and how so many of them really experience that burnout and they get they get um you know suicides and stuff. So anyway, so fatigue that's that's a big one, right? Yes. Feeling apathetic and dissatisfied. This one is particularly with work, but I think that beyond work, it goes elsewhere. You don't. With your family, you feel that way. With your friends, you feel that way. With the world, you feel that way. You know, it just is. Tension headaches. That was my big clue. Yeah. Big that, that, was, that was something that I knew. That was a sign for mm-hmm. me. I, and I used to blame it on my, oh, I'm grinding my teeth at night. You know, I, was like, <laughs> I think I did that too. I don't think that's it because my, my jaw is not hurting. So maybe that's yeah, it. I'm not grinding my teeth right now and I have a headache <laughs> yeah. because I'm tired yeah. of looking at this stuff that I think yeah. is just... It just sucks. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's so tension headaches. And, and we're talking about not like your random tension headaches, like you're consistent. You wake up with one. It's always there. It goes away for a little while. Then it comes back. You take stuff for it. It doesn't really work. It yeah. gives you a little bit of, you know, relief. But that's a big sign. Um, and we talked about feeling tired and drained. Low immunity. That's a big one. The headaches yeah. and the muscle pain. And then appetite and sleep habits. Those are the big physical signs. Emotional ones is, like we said earlier, a sense of failure and self-doubt, feeling helpless, trapped, and defeated. This was a big one. Detachment, feeling alone Alone in the the world. world. I see that a lot. Loss of motivation, just the whole cynical negative outlook thing. The cynical negative outlook, yeah. yeah, Does that resonate? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I think I've said it three times already. Yeah, this sucks. (laughs) 
that one you resonate that with. That resonate yeah. with that one. Yeah. <laughs> and then you decrease satisfaction and a sense of accomplishment. I mean, I see that one a lot. Yeah. So that those are the ones that kind of fall under the emotional symptoms and signs. The behavioral ones, I've seen this a lot, and I did this one. Withdrawal from responsibilities. Now suddenly you don't want to do that report and you don't want to make that phone call and you don't want to schedule those doctor's appointments yeah. and you don't want to take that car to the... You just don't. You isolate yourself. I'm real big on that. Isolating. Procrastination, a whole nother one. That, yeah, that's me. You know, and then I've seen... I, I've thankfully haven't done this as much, but I've seen this one a lot. Using food, drugs, and alcohol to cope. I've seen that a lot. Yeah. And I'm, sex. I don't know why they lose sex out of there. Because although I don't know how you would have the energy to sex when you're yeah. like burnt and out. Husband, my husband likes that one. <laughs> It's like, so can you burn out a little bit more? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aries, we love you. <laughs> <coughs> That's funny. Yeah, who's going to complain about that one? Yeah. Being, so. um, taking frustrations out on others. I've seen that a lot. Hmm. Skipping work or coming in late. That was me. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah that was well, me when I was needing through. to close down. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wasn't even present when my mom, like, my mom was in hospice. It's no way. That was major, though. Yeah, no. I it mean, it doesn't get was, much bigger than, than life and death. Yeah. I, that, that one I could have planned out a little bit better than I did. Um, okay. So then the difference between stress and burnout, you think we've sort of covered that a little I think bit so. more? Okay. So we've covered that enough. And again, all of this stuff is going to be in the show notes. So if people need to go back and sort of get information that's a little bit more specific let's talk about i think we call we we did talk about the causes a little bit some of it is our job some of it is an aging parent stay-at-home moms like i said before tending to kids in the housework um hard-working office worker who hasn't had a vacation in years yeah. to the frazzled <laughs> stay-at-home like all of these things combined with so many other things is yeah. what it's not those things alone okay so um it's not just caused solely by the st- stressful work or too many responsibilities there are other things that are included like lifestyle and personality traits right yeah um i think like you were talking about earlier there are those people that need to go 100 miles an hour yeah. and then there's the rest of us that kind of like to slow down and yeah. hang out with the birds in the garden kind yeah. of thing <laughs> like i mean i've got i've got people in my family the way that they relax is you know doing major hard laborious sort of work around the house i have a hard time relaxing though yeah i find that what like, does it look like for you because I, I may sit and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chill out and watch this on TV. And my brain mm. won't stop thinking about, okay, but what about this? You have Did one you of those this? brains. <laughs> it won't stop. Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay. Well, what do you tell your this. clients when they have that? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Heal or heal thyself, I know, right? I know. No, you know what's helpful for me? Because I do have one of those brains too. And I'm always like, I'm sitting here thinking about the new space and talking about this yeah. at the same time. Like, I'm all, we're moving to a new space next month. So, wait, where's that? So excited. Oh, I can't make it happen. Oh, damn. <laughs> There's a little clap thing there. I can't make it happen. Anyway, um, and so we're excited about that. But I'm thinking about that, too, while I'm doing this. Yeah. However, some of us can do that without burning ourselves out. Because it's just for a little minute. But, you know, it, ne- but it never stops. But so. if it never, stops, it never for, stops, you know, I don't know if this would work for you, but what's very helpful for me is writing all that stuff down. Like everything that's running through my head and designing and like doing whatever on a piece of paper. And then it kind of like gives my brain a little break. Maybe I should try that. You know, try that. because it's coloring. It's Shouldn't I color? Isn't no, it color? I mean like literally getting what you're thinking and what's on your mind. Would you see where my paper. brain just went? And like, yeah. Can I color? No. <laughs> well, you can. That does, that does help. It helps my dad with his dementia. You know, but I mean, I think whatever works. For some people, of yeah. course, meditation and all that. You just have to find that thing that works for you. For yeah. me, it happens to be writing it down because then I know it's somewhere. Like it's there and I can get to it. It just doesn't have to You know to what? I do do that. I keep the notes on my phone. Oh, yeah. Then yeah, that works. True. Yeah. That, yeah. So that's, that's a way okay. of doing it. So I guess I am Yeah. And trying. actually, and it's very normal. There's so many people that have that, you know, th- that going on. But yeah. it's just when it becomes so excessive, you yeah. know, and that's when the problem begins. The work-related causes of burnout we've talked about, you know, um, lifestyle. Let's talk about that one a little bit. You know, working too much. Without enough time to socialize or relax. How many people think that that's a great thing? You know, I'm working. I can't. I'm working, working. I've got to work. work. Yeah. Lack of close supportive relationships. Taking on too much responsibility while without enough help from others. Yeah. That happened to me. That happened to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, not and getting enough sleep. Not getting enough sleep. I think we all can yeah, raise think, our hands for that I think that one. that one's, I man, I'll tell you what, I prioritize. <sighs> Ever since my mom died, I prioritize the work and and. Other stuff, my yeah. balance and my sleep. I try, I'm really trying. That's something yeah. that I'm, that's a work in progress. Because yeah. I know we preach to people about mm-hmm. how important it is to sleep. It really is, yeah. To get the proper sleep. Because you just really can't function without the right amount of sleep. And I, 
I'm trying on that yeah. one. Yeah. Well, it takes time. And then you have to find a thing that works for you because yeah. different things work for different people. Yeah. I have found that when I watch, when I watch black and white old time <laughs> stuff, I don't know what it is about that. It's like this comfort feeling. I remember my grandma or something. I don't know. It yeah. just relaxes the hell out of me and yeah. makes me like feel like, oh, <laughs> this is kind of cool. You yeah. know, like, but if I watch anything else, I won't have that. Not the same. And it just makes me go to sleep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So personality traits. This I've seen too around me a lot. The perfectionist, perfectionistic tendencies that nothing is really ever good enough. Somebody can really drive themselves nuts with that. I it's, wonder if I fall into that category. Yeah, that's, that, that's, I think we all have that on some level. Yeah. It's just when it becomes all-consuming that is probably... And when you're never satisfied unless it's perfect, because you never accomplish anything. It's like chasing well, then that... I, then no, I'm not. That's not No, me. no. Yeah. You accomplish things. You just... Yeah. You, your standards are high and all that kind of stuff. That's one thing. But like never finishing, never feeling satisfied, never thinking you're doing enough because you have that perfectionistic thing. It has to be so... Never showing like what your house looks like because it has to look so perfect before somebody sees it. Mm. You know, these are personality traits. Pessimistic view of yourself in the world. That's a big one. I have a pessimistic view of the world, not of myself. And that, that I feel like I want to work on. The pessimistic yeah. view of the world. I don't know if that's possible anymore. I know because, I mean, I watch the news a lot. So it's kind of hard to... Excuse me. <laughs> Unfortunately, and you know, and I, you know, I try to be as transparent about this kind of stuff. Just like there's no such thing as a perfect person and a right. perfect family and a perfect relationship, the, the world is on fire. It just, I mean, come on, let's not forget, it's not even two years away from we almost burned down with COVID for those who, of us who believe who that believe COVID existed. It. <laughs> you know, like people died, it was crazy, people, things were happening, there was things that could, like that was a big deal. You know, um, so, and then before that with the politics, and then before that with social, you know, like, there's so many things. And then just like the other day in Tennessee, you know, and then you're thinking about even the leaders in Tennessee are freaking out of their mind with the kind of response. It never stops. It never stops. It is ongoing. And not just here in America, but around the world. There's some serious, serious things going on. So, of course, we're going to be pessimistic. But, you know, as therapists, what we try to teach our clients is, but what do we have control over? What can we actually control? You know, know. what we can control is this little area right here that we're hanging out in. Like, our own business. Let, let's not let that burn, <laughs> yeah. okay? Like, we can support all Tend those other things. Lane. <laughs> yeah, so, so there are ways to kind of deal with that. But there are, you know, and then the high achieving type A personality. That's what we were talking about earlier. And the need to control. The yeah. Are you to good delegate. at delegating stuff? Because I, I am. You are? I am very good at that. Okay. Well, I don't know. It depends on who you speak with because my nibblings will tell you no. But that's not true because then you'll go look at the text that I send left and right up and down. Yeah. I'm always delegating things. It's just they don't do they don't do it the way sometimes. that you want it to be done. Or yeah. ever, or even do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, have to keep following up. Did we do this yet? Did we schedule that yet? Did I will it? delegate the hell out of something, but then I'm like, okay, but what about, the, but then this <laughs> needs to, but something that's like, yeah. okay. But, but then the other things that I delegate get done. Like there are things that get done, 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 yeah. no problems, you know, right away I get the help. And then there's stuff that I'm still waiting, you know, and I, maybe I need to go do that. My, you know, it. <laughs> I don't, it's, it's here or there. At work, with work, I do. I have... I'm not very controlling at work as far as like everybody has to like, I don't micromanage or anything like that. I'd like people to be very independent, Independent, very like make their own mistakes. And I'm not going to make you feel some kind of way about that. We're going to learn. Like I am that, that kind of a a person. So people don't have to fear, you know, like trying to fly and trying to get their thing. And then what if I do it wrong? I, I, I'm pretty good with that. And I'm pretty good with delegating things. The stuff that I'm not good with delegating is the stuff I actually like doing, but I shouldn't be doing. But you shouldn't be doing. I should be delegating yeah. to people like that. That that can be problematic. But um, but there are people who really have a strong need to control and a reluctance to delegate. And on top of that, a high achieving type A personality and is relentless, they're going to burn out because yeah. you can't, you just can't. So, all right. So how do we take care of our mental health? Lisa. Oh my gosh. How do we take care of our mental health? We see a therapist, we, of yeah, course. Come see us. Come talk to us. You see a therapist. It's, it's actually a really good first step in tackling burnout because what happens is you're not talking to a family member. You're not talking to a friend. You're not talking to a coworker or a neighbor. You're talking to an advocate yeah. who's a lot more, um, first of all, trained to understand how this all works and what it looks like and not be personal about it and blinded and judgment or encourage you to be 
a workaholic or anything like that. So we're not those people. Um, and then, you know, we're impartial and we train and we give clinical feedback. It can be ch- life changing, you yeah. know, because people can really learn. You don't know what you don't know until you go talk to someone who actually is completely unbiased and can go and do like a lot of psychoeducation around. Right. Here's how this happened. Here's the difference between blah, blah. Here's what, it's not your fault. Here's what we can do about it. So I think something that people need to realize is that therapists have therapists. Mm-hmm. So Victoria and I talk about that in almost every podcast we've yeah. ever done. Like, if you're a therapist, you need to see a therapist, Lisa. <laughs> I'm raising my hand. <laughs> Actually, no, let's, let's clarify that. There's therapy and there's counseling, right? And we had a whole podcast about the difference between those two and how people get confused. You do the same kind of work in both. One is just short term. One is much longer term than much, much deeper and much mm-hmm. more, you know, the goals are much more specific and the kind of therapy you do and all of that. Counseling can be shorter, solution focused, get like you're going through a divorce. You don't need to be seeing a therapist for the rest of your life with that unless it was some major damage that right. happened. But you might need some counseling on the entire trauma of it and everything else that comes along right. with it. And then, but you don't have to be there forever with, or such a long period of time. Right. It's but not if, meant for long term. No. Yeah. But if you had a major significant traumatic event in your life, then you're going to have to do some therapy with that, not just counseling. So there are differences in that. And so all counselors should go to, all therapists slash counselors should go to counseling. <laughs> like mm-hmm. there should be some short term counseling involved in our work, just like social workers, right. you know, and police officers should be able to do that. Right. Firemen, military people. I think that there's just certain jobs that require that. Yeah. I also think that all, anybody who's in politics should be <laughs> like, I, I don't understand that, how they're not yeah. like you should be because the stress and the everything else and the. You should have. Everybody should have their own Everybody personal counselor. Yes, <laughs> anyway, so that's one of the ways is you go there, you know, because you have a place where you can work it out and you can learn how you can start to recover and start getting back to where you need to be, to yep. what your baseline is. Yep. Um, and therapists are very good at knowing what you need to do on a day-to-day basis in that situation. Um, some of the things that they might talk to you about is, here are some of the things that I talk with my clients about, you know, and they vary, but... Building breaks, personal check-ins into your schedule. I do that a lot now. Yes. You do that? I've tried to, do, trying that. to do that. I have it. It's, it's in my head to do. Yeah. I just have to actually mm-hmm. implement it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a big deal. Like, I, I, I'm just, I was just overwhelmingly surprised at the difference that it makes to do that break. And <clears throat> one of the things that I did when I started as a therapist, I didn't listen to the wise people that came before me, like my, my supervisors yeah. who were like very clear about this. I didn't listen. I listened. I just didn't do it. The whole take 50 minutes, don't do the whole 60 and then do your next person and then do your next person, do 55. You take the 50 minutes. That's what you're charging for. Those other 10 minutes are for you to get prepared and digest and whatever Absolutely. for the in-betweens. <clears throat> didn't do that. That, that did not last very long. Okay. I switched. I made it to where I get a, Ping. Like I, a, like there's a sound, a very lovely calming sound that takes yeah. place. But for me to understand, okay, now it's time. The session has ended. They don't really get the full hour. Why are you giving them a full hour? That full hour is encompassing of all, including those ten minutes for you to wrap up and notes and, all and that notes. Goes. Right. Yeah. It's just it, it depends on the you know how important or how mm-hmm. in depth the session has gone. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I just let it go. Exceptions. Yeah. There are, there are exceptions. exceptions. I will agree. But generally, that's what we do. Okay, and so there's other things like exercise, mindfulness, nutrition, <clears throat> you know, work-life balance like we talked about before. I hear exercise is really important. Maybe I should yeah. try that. <laughs> and the thing is, exercise doesn't have to be go to the gym three hours. It's yeah. like go outside to your garden and pull weeds, you know. Go walk outside down the block for a minute. Do a quick 15-minute walk. I will find Stretch. an excuse to yeah, I know. not I, do I know. any of that. Yeah. So there's lots of ways that we can deal with burnout. We're kind of running out of time, so I don't want to really like get into all of that right now and have to you know chop it off in the middle of talking <laughs> about it. So I'm going to put it all in our show notes, and you guys can definitely go and look there for all of the the choices that you can kind of go to to try to prevent burnout or if you're trying to recover from br- burnout, the steps to take, what it looks like, who to reach out to, references, all those sorts of things. All right, so um, I just want to remind everyone that you can find any information about our podcast, including subscription information at studiotalkpodcast.net. 
You can contact us via email at studiotalkmentalhealth at gmail.com or send us, a, send us a text or call us at 843-695-9974 and we are here for you. So until next time, Lisa. Yes. <laughs> until next time. <laughs> next time we might be talking to you about our new space or from our new space. We don't know. So excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'll talk about that. But take care of yourselves, everyone, because burnout is pretty serious. Um, look it up. You know, Google it. Do some research on it. Go on YouTube about it, and you'll see it's pretty serious stuff. And but it's treatable, it's fixable, and it's preventable. Okay. All right. Take care of your mental health. Bye-bye. Take care. <laughs> hey, everyone. Victoria here. Thanks for listening to Studio Talk. We hope you enjoyed our conversation into all things related to mental health. As always, you can head over to Studio Talk on YouTube or on Ziomara's website at the x-studio.org, where you can click on the podcast tab on the top menu. Sign up for our email list is there, as well as check out all the links and resources, including Ziomara's website, in the show notes. That's all for this episode, and we hope to see you next time. If you are experiencing any psychological distress, please call 911 or go to your nearest emergency room.